points. We're going to now move on to the uh, uh, command line version of things. Um, this is from Red Hat, uh, Martin, and probably others. Thank you very much for your contributions as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, CVELib is Python. There is a library, but also, more importantly for me, it makes a nice uh, CVE command line utility that one can use to interact with the services. It is definitely much easier than using uh, bash or shell commands and curl. Uh, and uh, you can roll your own with, with sort of bash and curl if you want, but um, uh, I would strongly recommend folks consider CVE lib if you want to go command line. You need to know absolutely zero Python in order to do this. Um, and I can confirm that the installation instructions are pretty much uh, right on the money. So pretty straightforward to do. Um, I'm going to switch screens here. I have to go over to a terminal. So one moment while I switch over. I'm going to share the hopefully it's this window. So hopefully folks see a terminal window and it is sufficiently large enough text. Now's a good yes. time to tell me if that's not true. Okay, thanks. Okay. So I have, uh, I have, I have um, just this, this CVE repo here is my, uh, the script that I wrote to demo this. This CVE lib how to script is 100% not necessary at all in any way to interact with the services. It is literally uh, an elaborate way to just spit out um, the commands necessary to uh, install and run uh, CVE lib from the command prompt. So um, you don't ever even need to use the CVE lib how to script. It's just for demonstration purposes. Um, and it's going to run through a bunch of commands. I'll just go a little bit slowly and talk about them as we go here. Um, this is all pretty straightforward stuff. Um, you need a bit of configuration for this, which I'll, I'll do after the fact. Um, but there are a couple of, there's a configuration file uh, for, well, sorry. You need to set environment variables or to provide options to the CVE command that tell the CVE command what your API key is, what your environment is, tester production, your username, and your organization name. So in my little demo script here, I have a config file that, that just sets those variables for my shell. Um, the CVE lib documentation is entirely correct. I'll just scroll down quickly to give people an idea here, right? You need to do these things if you're using it from the command prompt. Uh, Windows has different syntax, hooray, two different syntaxes. <laughs> um, but these things are necessary to uh, have ready in the CVE lib environment. Um, I'm almost certain you can pass these these values on the command line to the CVE client, but you know the environment setting is probably better. Oh, I'm sorry, geez. I uh, assumed folks could see my browser screen and you couldn't. I will come back to the CVE config stuff. It's straightforward. So uh, this is just reading those config files and confirming that I have sort of modern versions of stuff. Uh, you need a Python 3 for CVE lib. And we're going to need Git at all. So I'm just going to clone the Git repo here. And I'm going to go in there and uh, I'm going to create a Python virtual environment, which I have learned is the clean way to do such things. I'm going to activate the environment. Some really basic Python upgrading maintenance, which is not strictly necessary to run this. But since I got into the demo, I figured I'd do it the right way. And sure enough, I now have in my virtual and Python environment, this CVE command that I can go run. So here's where you need to set these environment variables. I'm going to use the test production, the test environment, not production, my user ID, my org, and my API key is redacted, but under the hood here, it's setting, setting the proper API key. This is the help screen. Uh, there are help screens for many of the commands, probably all of them. So the help, the help is pretty decent. And the uh, markdown in the GitHub repo is pretty decent for this as well. Uh, I'm going to look at my organization. And here's the command line version of what we just saw in the other clients. Uh, this is all about my org. And here are the users in this organization. I'm going to create a user coming up. So this is the help screen I would need. 
and I'm going to pass these uh, command line options and create a user if things work. And here's the API key. And now is the time to remember that API key or else, um, you know, you're not going to see it again. You'll have to just reset it. I'm going to take a look at that user and sure enough, they exist. And as you can tell, they are active. And role none here means they don't have the admin role. There's only one role currently. It's either admin or empty. Uh, I want to change my user. Um, I'm going to change their first name because I messed something up. And sure enough, uh, that works. That changed. I'm going to change their username, which is their email address by convention. And sure enough, that works too. Now I'm going to make them admin. People asked about that. And confirm that, yes, they haven't given the admin role. But wait, that was a mistake. Uh, I want to uh, remove their admin powers. So I take their admin role back. I can deactivate the user. I cannot delete a user. I can deactivate a user, however. Uh, I believe the secretariat has the power to actually remove a user if, if that was desired. Uh, active, no. And I changed my mind yet again. Uh, now I'm going to make them active. So now they're back to their normal state of active and not being an admin. If I do forget the API key and I'm the OA, uh, I've now set a new API key for, for that user. Um, and again, grab it now because it's going away. So I can manage my users. I'm now going to do some reservation. I'm going to list the IDs I already have. Here they are. I'm going to list only rejected IDs. That's probably going to be blank. I'm going to list published IDs. Those are in the published state and reserved. I think this is going to be empty also. Um, oh, this is a bit of an old note, but uh, a couple of text strings changed. If you have written any uh, JSON 4 pre services, pre JSON 5 parsing, and you're looking at states called reject and public, they are now rejected and published. Uh, heads up on that. I'm going to reserve an ID. Uh, and this Unix command line mess you can mostly ignore. This is just so that the demo script works well. You can just say CVE reserve raw. I'm doing this in order to grab all the JSON and then pull out what I really want, which is uh, this ID. If you're watching, this is sequential. So this is up to 2494. The last ones we reserved were 93 and 92 a moment, uh, a moment ago. So, uh, right now, it's gonna, I'm going to show that ID. It's in the reserved state. It's sitting there reserved and empty, just waiting for some good content. And now I want to publish. So CVE lib supports two publication options. Again, um, CVE lib itself does not uh, have an interface for you to create your content. You have to do that elsewhere. This is the command line version of shipping the JSON off to uh, CVE lib. And this is a about the most minimal JSON I could find that works. Um, and I am within the CNA container, I believe. I'm not even providing a CNA container um, uh, JSON element here. This is within the CNA uh, container itself. So I'm going to publish this, cross my fingers, and it says it worked. So um, it's now showing the, showing the published state, confirming it shows published, and now I'm going to show the details for it, and I'm going to get this uh, JSON output. Yeah, so recall the JSON I submitted started here. I sent affected descriptions and references. Uh, CVE client took care of provider metadata. I'm pretty sure I'll confirm that in a minute. Uh, I did not send in JSON at the CNA or the container uh, level. Uh, now I want to update. So I'm going to use an existing record. I think CVE lib is smart enough to realize this is an update because it knows the published state of this. So uh, I'm going to update this. And I just wanted to change the description a little bit and say that I'd made a recent update. So I'm going to roll through here and show the record. And hopefully, yep, that change is now, now in there. 
Um, oh, so the next, next thing I'm going to do here, this temp file, again, here, you can ignore the mess. It's just a temporary random location. But I'm now going to publish with the CVE libs uh, option to part to give it a file as an argument instead of uh, stuffing the JSON on the command line. So this is my very minimal uh, JSON file I'm going to use to upload. Again, I'm at the affected descriptions and references uh, level. I do not even provide the provider metadata uh, object in here. And I'm going to specify that file and say, hey, I don't, want, I don't want to put JSON on the command line. I have some other output that's going to produce a JSON file in the right format and the right levels. I'm just going to use that and publish it with CVE lib. That says it worked. And this also confirms that it worked. Oh, yeah, I have a note here that it that it used that file as the source. So uh, that's going to be, I'm going to exit my virtual environment here. And this is the end of the CVE lib demo. Uh, I was chatting with some folks earlier. I, I didn't get very far with it, but it is entirely possible to use, you know, curl uh, and some command line shell scripting of your choice and interact with the services that way as well. What you need is the account provisioning and the API key. And if you want to go write your own client from scratch, as some folks have done, uh, that works as well. The API docs are, are as far as I can tell, 100% accurate. 